boys and girls, welcome to Karen Reed, sitting here in my living room with you again in South Berwick, hoping you're enjoying your summer. Um, our book for today is Moret on the High Wire by Emily Arnold McCulley. Emily McCulley is a very interesting woman. Um, she both illustrated and wrote this um, this book. She sketched a lot as a child, and her mother encouraged her and said, someday you can do that to support yourself. She went to college in art history, and then one by one got illustration jobs so that she could support herself. So her dream came true. She's illustrated and written over 200 books. She says, you can't aim to please other people. Do what matters most to you, then hope readers respond. So good advice from Emily McCulley. With this book, she won the Caldecott for best illustration in the United States in a whole year. It, it opens with a page with no words, just downtown Paris. A page with no words. Okay. 100 years ago in Paris, when theaters and music halls drew traveler, traveling players from all over the world, the best place to stay was at the Widow Gateau's a boarding house on English Street. Acrobats, jugglers, actors, and mimes from as far away as Moscow and New York reclined on the Widow's feather mattresses and devoured her kidney stews. Madame Gateau worked hard to make her guests comfortable, and so did her daughter, Marat. The girl was an expert at washing linens, chopping leeks, paring potatoes, potatoes, and mopping floors. She was a good listener, too. Nothing pleased her more than to overhear the vagabond players tell of their adventures in this town and that along the road. One evening, a tall, sad-faced stranger arrived. He told, told Madame Gateau he was Bellini, a retired high-wire wire walker. I am here for a rest, he said. I have just the room for you, Monsieur Bellini, in the back, where it's quiet, she said. It's on the ground floor and there's no view. Perfect, said the stranger. I will take my meals alone. The next afternoon, when Moret came for the sheets, there was the stranger crossing the courtyard on air. Moret was enchanted. Of all the things a person could do, this must be the most magical. Her feet tingled as if they wanted to jump, jump up on the wire beside Bellini. Moret worked up the courage to speak. Excuse me, Monsieur Bellini. I want to learn to do that, she cried. Bellini sighed. That would not be a good idea, he said. Once you start, your feet are never happy again on the ground. Oh, please teach me, Moret begged. My feet are already unhappy on the ground. But he shook his head. Mirette watched him every day. 
he would slide his feet onto the wire, cast his eyes ahead across without ever looking down, as if in a trance. Finally, she couldn't resist any longer. When Bellini was gone, she jumped up on the wire to try it herself. Her arms flailed like windmills. In a moment, she was back on the ground. Bellini had made it look so easy. Surely she could do it too if she kept trying. In 10 tries, she balanced on one foot for a few seconds. In a whole day, she managed three steps without wavering. Finally, after a week of many, many falls, she walked the length of the wire. She couldn't wait to show Bellini. He was silent for a long time. And then he said, in the beginning, everyone falls. Most to give up, but you kept trying. Perhaps you have talent as well. Oh, thank you, said Marette. She got up two hours earlier every day to finish her chores before the sun shone in the courtyard. The rest of the day was for lessons and practice. Bellini was a strict master. Never let your eyes stray, he told her the day, and told her day after day. Think only of the wire and of crossing to the end. When she could cross dozens of times without falling, he taught her the wire walker's salute. Then she learned to run, to lie down, and to turn in a somersault. I will never fall again, Marette shouted. Do not boast, Bellini said, so sharply that Marette, Marette lost her balance and had to jump down. One night, an agent from Astley's Hippodrome in London rented a room. He noticed Bellini on his way to dinner. What a shock to see him here, he said. See who, asked him I. Why, the great Bellini. Didn't you know he was in the room at the back? Bellini, the one who crossed Niagara Falls, on a thousand foot wire in 10 minutes, asked the mine. And on the way back, he stopped in the middle to cook an omelet on a stove full of live coals. Then he opened a bottle of champagne and toasted the crowd, the agent said. My uncle used to talk about that, said a juggler. Bellini crossed the Alps with baskets tied to his feet, fired a cannon over the bullring in Barcelona, walked a flaming wire wearing a blindfold in Naples. The man had the nerves of an iceberg, the agent said. Marette raced to Bellini's room. Is it true, she cried? Did you do all those things? Why didn't you tell me? I want to do them too. 
I want to go with you. I can't take you, said Bellini. But why not, asked Marat. Bellini hesitated a long time. Because I am afraid, he said at last. Marat was astonished. Afraid? She said, but why? Once you have fear on the wire, it never leaves, Bellini said. But you must make it leave, Murat insisted. I cannot, Bellini said. Murat turned and ran to the kitchen as tears sprang to her eyes. She had felt such joy on the wire. Now Bellini's fear was like a cloud casting its black shadow on all she had learned from him. Bellini paced his room for hours. It was terrible to disappoint Moret. By dawn, he knew that if he didn't face his fear at last, he could not face Moret. He knew what he must do. The question was, could he succeed? That night, when the agent returned, Bellini was waiting for him. The agent listened to Bellini's plan with mounting excitement. I'll take care of it, he promised. To himself, he added, a big, big crowd will bring me a tidy profit. What luck I just happen to be in Paris right now. Bellini went out to find a length of rope with a steel core. He borrowed a winch and worked until daylight securing the wire. The next evening, Moret heard the commotion in the street. Go and see what it is, her mother said. Maybe it will cheer you up. In the square was a hubbub. The crowd was so thick she couldn't see, at first, that the agent was aiming a spotlight at the sky. Return of the great Bellini, he was yelling. Could it be? Moret's heart hammered in her chest. Bellini stepped out onto the wire and saluted the crowd. He took a step and then froze. The crowd cheered wildly, but something was wrong. Marat knew at once what it was. For a moment, she was as frozen as Bellini was. Then she threw herself out the door behind her, ran inside, up flight after flight of stairs, and out through a skylight to the roof. She stretched her hands to Bellini. He smiled and began to walk toward her. She stepped onto the wire and with the most intense pleasure, as she had always imagined it might be, she started to cross the sky. Bravo, bravo, shouted the crowd. Protege of the great Bellini, shouted the agent. He was beside himself, already planning the world tour of Bellini and Moret. As for the master and his people, they were thinking only of the wire and of crossing to the end. As he said, think only of that. And here's a little girl looking at a poster 
It says Norbert and Bellini. Okay, good to hang out with you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.